9. Nancy Plain While hunting in the forest in 1991, a Soviet hunter came across a World War II-era German fighter plane. He notified the authorities right away, and after doing some digging, they determined the aircraft had taken off from a nearby airport toward the front line in 1943. The destination wasn't far, only about 15 minutes away, when Soviet anti-aircraft artillery attacked it and destroyed its fuel supply system. The pilot, Major Paul Rattle, tried to fly back to the airport, but he didn't make it and he crash-landed in the woods. The Soviet army captured Rattle, and he remained a prisoner for a few years after the war ended. German engineers designed the plane, known as Fog Wolf FW-190, the single-engine, single-seat plane in the late 1930s. By the time the Russian hunter found the downed aircraft in 1991, someone had removed its machine gun. The German military may have done this as part of a failed effort to recover the plane. Finally, not long after its rediscovery, the Soviets removed the fighter plane from the forest and took it to a nearby Soviet base. The USSR was under immense economic strain and just months away from collapsing. Lacking the resources to do anything with the plane, the government sold it to the British Aviation Collection. They restored it over the next few decades, and in 2010, the aircraft finally flew again for the first time in 67 years. 8. Hidden Frescoes Several years ago, Tufts University professor Christina Moranchi discovered hidden centuries-old artwork at the Moren Cathedral, a historic church in Western Armenia. She was hiding from local police inside the church during her investigation of off-limits archaeological sites when she suspected that there was something beneath the plaster on the walls. Moranchi snapped photos with her high-end camera and used Photoshop to enhance the obscured features visually restoring parts of the hidden frescoes and inscriptions that are invisible to the naked eye, including an ox in the church's apse. She believes the image is an early 11th century depiction of the biblical figure Ezekiel, with an ox, lion, man, and an angel, the symbols of the four evangelists Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But Moranchi also admitted that her speculation is inconclusive for now, and that more investigation needs to be done to confirm the fresco's age and meaning. The keen-eyed researcher said she wasn't interested in frescoes when she made the discovery, but that the finding prompted her to investigate other old churches for similar historical features. And while she credits imaging software that anyone could use for drawing out the concealed artwork, Moranchi noted the importance of someone knowing what they're looking for. She continues to investigate her findings and hopes to overcome several obstacles surrounding the discovery, including a lack of experts and governmental red tape that prevents researchers from legally exploring valuable historical sites in the region. 7. Medieval Tunnel Electrical workers in Monmouthshire, Wales, were digging a hole for a new power line in a customer's backyard last year, and they discovered a mysterious network of medieval tunnels beneath a 12th century abbey. A longer brook, the tunnel system is just four feet tall, and there's no official record of it being built. Archaeologists who investigated the site don't know what people use the tunnels for or how extensive the system is. It doesn't appear on any maps created by the UK's mapping agency, which dates back to the 18th century. If anyone had known about the site, the power company wouldn't have had permission to dig as they did. The tunnels may be connected to nearby Tintern Abbey, a national icon of Wales that was built in 1131. The abbey fell into ruin following King Henry VIII's dissolution of the monasteries in the 16th century, which would explain the tunnel's absence in historical records. They may be associated with the ruins of some old furnaces and ironworks in the area. But the discovery is remarkable, as evidenced by the words of technician Alan Gore, who said, I've been involved in other excavations, where we've discovered old wells and cellars not shown on any plans, but nothing as exciting and impressive as this. The crew rerouted the electrical work, and archaeologists planned to excavate the tunnels, hoping to learn their source. 6. Lost Golden City Early last year, Egypt's Ministry of Antiquities announced the discovery of the ruins of what archaeologists called the Lost Golden City of Luxor. Dating back over 3,000 years, archaeologists found the ancient metropolis buried in the sand last September. It's the largest ancient Egyptian city ever uncovered, according to archaeologist Zahi Hawass, who led the team that unexpectedly made the discovery while searching for Tutankhamun's mortuary temple. 
The team was surprised during the dig to encounter zigzagging mud walls measuring as much as 10 feet tall. Without meaning to, they'd found a city that other archaeologists had tried and failed to find. In a statement, archaeologist Betsy Bryan described the site as the most important discovery in Egypt since archaeologists found King Tut's tomb in 1922. Speaking with NBC, Howard said that the Golden City will help researchers better understand life during ancient Egypt's Golden Age. So far, the team's unearthed rings, scarabs, colored pottery, tools, and other artifacts dating back between 1391 and 1353 BC, during the reign of Amenhotep III. The site contains storage houses, grinding stones, and areas for meat production, offering an unprecedented look at everyday life in an industrial Egyptian city. Oddly, the archaeologists found a skeleton with its arms outstretched and a rope around the knees. They have yet to come up with an explanation for the odd burial, and have several other lingering questions they hope to answer through further excavations of the site. 5. Atomic Scale Wires During a study that involved examining the properties of silver on an atomic scale, researchers from Australia, China, and Japan accidentally developed a wire just one atom wide. As part of the experiment, the team put nanoparticles of silver on the outside of tiny rods with channels inside and tested them in regular air instead of a vacuum as they normally would. When we do this in a vacuum or in some inert atmosphere as people usually do, nothing happens, Queensland University of Technology QUT, Professor Dimitri Goldberg explained. But we did it in air. The atoms from silver particles diffused quickly, and they diffused inside the channels. The team expected the silver to react with the air and form a silver oxide, but the atoms self-organized within the channels, forming 200 atom-thin wires, each about one-fifth as thick as a human hair. It wasn't intentional, it wasn't planned to make wires, Goldberg said. The accidental creation opens the doorway for the development of atomic-scale wires, something scientists have been trying to achieve for two decades. Additional research shows that people could use silver nanowires as thermal switches. At some temperature, the material became an insulator. This isn't common for silver, and is called metal insulator transition, Goldberg explained, adding that the next goal is to make the wires even smaller. What accidental discovery do you think has benefited society the most? Share your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. 4. Fossilized algae. Geobiology graduate student Katie Maloney knew the odds were against her when she went on a mission to find microscopic fossils of early life in the remote mountains of Canada's Yukon Territory. Despite her slim chances of finding anything, Maloney discovered rare fossils of several newly discovered ancient algae species. They lived on the seafloor 950 million years ago, a conspicuously sparse time on the fossil record. The fossils are helping to fill in what scientists call an evolutionary gap between algae, one of the first eukaryotic life forms, organisms with cells that have a DNA containing nucleus, and more complex life. While Maloney considers her discovery an unexpected stroke of luck, her keen eye played a crucial role in identifying the fossils. When she noticed hundreds of curvy, intertwined traces containing visible structures within them, she had a pretty good idea that she'd found a fossil of a living organism. Using microscopy and geochemical techniques, Maloney and her team confirmed the fossils were early eukaryotes and identified several species. These findings make up the first fossilized microscopic specimens from the time ever found. Not long after, a team of scientists made a similar discovery, which may also help piece together the eukaryotic evolutionary timeline. 3. New Natural Blue It may surprise you to learn that the color blue rarely occurs in nature, making naturally occurring pigments especially hard to find. Many blue hues are combinations of reds and purples, rather than true blue. But a recently discovered variation of cyan blue might be used as an alternative to synthetic brilliant blue dye. Detected by chemists as part of a collaborative project between the University of California Davis and Mars Wrigley, they source the color from red cabbage, which contains water-soluble pigments called anthocyanins. Only a small amount of the vegetable's anthocyanins are blue, prompting the researchers to use specially designed enzymes to turn some of the other anthocyanins in the desired shade. They designed the enzyme with the help of a powerful computer, 
which sorted through trillions of potential protein sequences to come up with an efficient combination. The resulting cyan blue pigment is reportedly nearly identical to the industry's go-to synthetic dye, known as Brilliant Blue FCF or E133. Artificial blues have proven problematic, often posing environmental or durability issues. Some, like cobalt blue, even turned out to be toxic, and Prussian blue released cyanide. The new pigment comes not long after scientists at Oregon University accidentally discovered YLNMN blue, a so-called near-perfect blue pigment in 2009. It was the first such discovery in 200 years, and came while the researchers were observing the electrical properties of heated manganese oxide, a project that had nothing to do with looking for a pigment. 2. Ancient Fish While studying sediment cores collected from Norwegian coastal lakes, a group of geologists found the remarkably well-preserved bones of an ancient three-spined stickleback fish. After the ice sheets melted at the end of the last ice age, coastlines throughout the northern hemisphere experienced an uplift, creating inland lakes that effectively cut the species off from the ocean. The recently discovered fish lived in brackish waters around 12,000 years ago, a time when the lake the researchers found it in was nearly but not completely disconnected from the sea. A new study reveals that stickleback populations in separate places evolved to survive in their new freshwater environments, experiencing similar changes in their behavior, function, and appearance, a phenomenon known as parallel evolution. Scientists typically rely on modern-day freshwater and marine species as models for learning about parallel evolution. The rare opportunity to study these types of changes in ancient species eliminates some of the guesswork that comes with differentiating modern evolutionary traits from those experienced by ancestral populations. For the study, scientists extracted DNA from two prehistoric stickleback fish and compared the results against modern specimens. Although these bones belong to sticklebacks that died thousands of years ago, when most of Scandinavia was still covered by a giant ice sheet, they still contain fragments of DNA, researcher Dr. Andrew Foote explained. These genetic sequences provide us with a window into the deep past and to the early stages of freshwater adaptation. The researchers concluded that while newly arising genetic mutations are sometimes responsible for adaptation, the stickleback fish already contained genetic variants that made them adaptive to fresh water. But, as lead study author Melanie Kirch admitted, even when the colonizing ancestor carried genetic variants known to be adaptive in fresh water, these variants are not always present in the contemporary population. This tells us that even beneficial freshwater adaptive variants can be lost during the evolutionary process of adaptation likely by random chance, a process known as genetic drift. These findings are helping experts to better learn the ways evolution occurs over thousands or even tens of thousands of years, hoping to fill in the gaps in evolutionary timelines. 1. Prehistoric Turtle While searching through the ruins of a church that was destroyed by an earthquake in Christchurch, New Zealand, sculptor Paul Deeds happened upon a 35 million year old turtle fossil embedded in the core of a limestone pillar. Built between 1881 and 1882, the Oxford Terrace Baptist Church sustained extensive damage in the 2011 Canterbury earthquakes. When earthquakes demolished it in 2011, crews hollowed its pillars out for the construction of a new church that opened in 2017. Deans received several pieces of the pillar's cores last year to use in his work, leading him to the rather unexpected discovery. Dr. Paul Schofield, a senior curator of natural history at the Canterbury Museum noticed that the unnamed ancient turtle species resembles another turtle fossil that a builder found while quarrying limestone in Omaru in 1880. He concluded both fossils were likely extracted from the same quarry and may contain parts of the same animal. In an interview with Stuff, Schofield explained in his own words that turtle fossils are really rare in New Zealand. Nobody's ever found similar turtle fossils in Omaru in over 150 years of quarrying there. He added, It's amazing that this new fossil was sitting inside a pillar for 130 years. It could have been lost forever. Scientists will study the newly discovered piece and will examine microfossils surrounding the turtle to determine if the two fossils are from the same animal as they suspect. Schofield speculates that the prehistoric species was a sea turtle, similar in size to the modern-day leatherback turtle which grows up to 7.2 feet long. It lived during the Oligocene period, 
which lasted from 65.5 million to 23 million years ago, when shallow seawater covered New Zealand. If you found a valuable artifact, would you give it to a museum or keep it for yourself? Let me know in the comments. Remember to subscribe to our channel and give us a like. Make sure you come back for more fabulous videos. See you soon.